Good evening, children. It's Granny Macduff, ready with a story. So make yourselves comfy, and I'll begin. Once upon a time, there lived a little snail called Cedric. He had a lovely shell, which his mother taught him to take excellent care of. Your shell is your home, she would say. You must take good care of it, for it is the only one you'll get. And Cedric did take great care. So much care, in fact, that he never went anywhere. He just stayed close to his mother under the ferns in the forest where they lived. One day, Cedric decided he wanted to see what was under the hosta just beside the fern. He knew that some of the other little snails played there in the afternoons and he wanted to join in on the fun. His mother was having a nap and would certainly not go with him. But he had to go. So he did. He crawled out from under the fern and crossed through a ray of sunlight. How lovely it was! Finally, he found himself under the hosta. It was quiet and beautiful. Nice and shady, just how Cedric liked it. But no one was there. He looked around and around, but it was just him. Then he heard someone giggling. <laughs> Who's there? No one replied. But instead, whoever it was, giggled again. <laughs> All right then, I'm leaving. Cedric began to turn around. No! He stopped. From under a hosta leaf appeared another little snail. Don't go, I was only playing a game. Hide and seek. I've never played that. You've never played hide and seek? Well, I'm quite sorry for you then. What's your name? Cedric asked. I'm Mary. Hi Mary, I'm Cedric. Will you teach me how to play hide and seek? I would be very pleased to. And so Mary taught Cedric to play hide and seek. They managed to get through one full round. Snails are quite slow, you know, before it was time to go home. Meet here again tomorrow? Mary asked. I'd love to, Cedric replied. That night, he told his mother all about Mary and the game that they had played. She was so happy that Cedric had explored a bit and made a new friend. I don't want you to go too far from home now, but when you do meet your friends, remember to keep an eye out. There are reports that the ground beetles are back. You must be careful. Yes, mother, Cedric replied. And whatever you do, do not go near the rocky mountains of Gravel, nor the desert of stone. They are treacherous. You are not to go. Promise me? I promise, mother. Good. And with that, Cedric's mother kissed him goodnight. The next day, Cedric met Mary under the hoster just as before. They spent the whole day together. And the next, and the next. Cedric and Mary were best friends by the time the fall came. The leaves began to change colour. Brilliant reds and yellows. And the air grew crisp. One day, Mary said to Cedric, Let's go somewhere else. I'm tired of playing under the hosta. Let's go see what the grasses have to offer. It's too open to get there. A bird could get us. We should stay under here where it's safe. Cedric, sometimes you have to go on an adventure. We can't stay under here forever. Mary took off. Slowly. I don't mind staying under here, Cedric said to himself. Then he huffed and puffed and made his mind up. Mary! Wait for me, he cried, 
and he crawled right after her. They reached the opening where the hosta ended and there was a patch that was very open to the outside world. Cedric looked up and saw a squirrel in the tree. What's that? he cried. A squirrel? Have you never seen one? No, it's huge. They eat nuts and berries. Don't worry, they don't eat snails. Phew, cried Cedric. They kept going until they reached the grasses. How tall and glorious they were. Mary climbed up a blade of grass. Look how we can climb here. Cedric crawled up another blade. It shook in the wind. He laughed. How lovely it was. I can see all the way to the ocean. No, you can't. Well, almost. Certainly, if the wind lifts me, I can see it. I'm coming to your stop, then we can see it together. Mary crawled back down to the ground. Just as she was about to board Cedric's stalk, a ground beetle ran by and grabbed her. It took her off toward the rocky mountains of Gravel and the desert of stone. <coughs> Mary cried, Cedric, help! Mary! Cedric crawled as fast as he could, but it was no use. He was too slow. Just as he thought all was lost, a toad appeared. Hop on, he said. Cedric turned the other way. He knew toads enjoyed snails very much. He did not want to be dinner. Relax, little one. I'm not partial to Escargo. My brother may be, but I'm more of a worm guy myself. Now, hop on. If you want to save your friend, I can help you. Cedric was quite frightened. But how could he leave Mary? He must save her. So he crawled up onto the toad's back. They went. The toad was fast. Cedric loved it. He could never go this fast on his own. There they are, Cedric cried. Where? To the right. The toad turned and followed the beetle until suddenly the toad stopped. It was right at the edge of the forest where the dirt met the desert of stone. This is as far as I go. You've got to cross the desert of stone yourself, my friend. But I will tell you, they say the beetles are holed up in the rocky mountains of Gravel. How will I know which mountain? The tallest one, which stands in the centre. Go quickly. The desert is hot and treacherous. Thank you, Mr. Toad. My pleasure, little one. Cedric forged on. He crawled across the desert. Hot as it was, he went as fast as he could. Rocks and branches and leaves sat in his way. But he persevered. When he was almost across and could see the rocky mountains of Gravel, he heard chatter. Hello, said Cedric. Who's there? said a gruff voice. I'm Cedric the snail. A snail? Looks like we've got dinner, said another voice. And suddenly three ground beetles appeared from behind a rock. They were pirate beetles. One had a fly on his shoulder and another an eye patch. They all wore big hats and carried sharp little twigs as swords. They were ferocious. I'm no one's dinner. I'm searching for my friend. Please let me pass, said Cedric. What friend? asked the second beetle. My friend Mary. She was taken by a beetle, Cedric cried. What does beetle look like? asked the third beetle. Well... Uh, he looked just like you, except he had a little white star on his back, Cedric said. That's him, 
said the first Beetle. We've been looking for him. He's the bandit of bandits. Bob is his name, said the second. Yeah, bandit of bandits for short, the third explained. He took our treasure, a gold necklace given to me by my great-great-grandfather. He was a pirate too. We've been tracking Bob ever since he took it. When we find it, we'll get it back, said the first. We're here to stop him, the second beetle said. Mr Toad told me that they live in the highest mountain, right in the centre, Cedric told them. Is that so? asked the first. Looks like we've finally got a location, boys. Thanks, Snail, replied the third. We won't eat you, but get out of here. This is no place for the likes of you, the second warned him. Cedric stood his ground. I'm coming with you, he said. I must find my friend. I will not leave her. You're too slow, said the third. I can help with that, said a new voice. A tarantula appeared. Terry! It's Terry! Fellas, how goes it? said Terry. Oh, you know as usual. But we're chasing that beetle, said the first. Yes, I heard you. I'll help the little fella get there, and I'd like to help you. They've been making a lot of trouble around these parts. Time for them to move on. Quite a band of misfits we are. Welcome, Terry, and... said the third. Cedric. Cedric, the little snail, Terry remarked. Not so little. Terry laughed. <laughs> All right, Cedric, the not-so-little snail, hop on. Terry ordered. Once Cedric was situated on Terry's back, they all travelled to the rocky mountains of Gravel. It was a beautiful place. Grass grew, trees were happy, and the rocks smiled on the sides of the mountains. There it is, cried Cedric. And sure enough, in the centre was the tallest mountain and at the bottom there was a large hole the beetle's lair let's go cried one of the beetles wait said cedric yes i don't even know your names i'm rapscallion i'm knave and i'm scamp we are the mischievous scoundrels Cedric laughed. I like that. Can I have a pirate name? Cedric asked. You already do. Your name is a strong one. It means commander, Scamp replied. Oh, I like that. I am strong and I'm not afraid of anything. Good. Now can we go? Asked Knave. Lead the charge, Cedric cried. Charge! Shouted Rapscallion. Charge! roared Scamp. Let's get them! cried Knave. They charge into the hole at the base of the tallest mountain in the centre of the rocky mountains of Gravel. It's dark inside, but they soon reach an enormous cave. There is light, and they see a large group of ground beetles working to make the cavern bigger. Mary! cried Cedric. Mary was trapped off to the side with other captives being guarded by two huge beetles. Do you see that pillar? It's holding up the centre ceiling. If we knock it down, the ceiling will fall and we will defeat them, said Rapscallion. Terry, take Cedric closer to Mary. When you hear my cry, Barge into the guards. Free the captives and get them out of here, Knave ordered. That should be enough of a distraction for us to take down the pillar, said Scamp. Happy to do it, Terry said. On my call, said Rapscallion. The gang ready themselves. Go, he cried. They dispersed. Terry... 
Cedric knock into the guards, who are so surprised that by the time they are back on their feet, they don't even realise Terry has already made off with all five captives. Cedric, cried Mary, I knew you would rescue me. Hold on, Mary, Cedric told her. The scoundrels push and push and push. Finally, the pillar comes loose. Then, Rapscallion sees Bob. Bob, he cried. Go, Rapscallion, get him. We'll take this down, Scamp said. Rapscallion ran towards Bob. Give me back what's mine, he cried. Never, Bob replied. Rapscallion takes out his sword made of twig and they duel. He gets his sword around Bob's necklace and pulls. No, cried Bob. Back to its rightful owner, Rapscallion said. Scamp and Knave knock the pillar down. The roof began to cave in. They run. Rapscallion, Scamp cried, but it was no use. Rapscallion disappeared in the dust. He will find his way. Go, Knave ordered. When they are outside, they see Terry and Cedric with Mary and everyone they have rescued. Where is Rapscallion? Cedric asks. Lost, said Scamp. No, I will go back in and find him, Cedric cried. No, you won't, said Terry. Suddenly, someone coughed. <coughs> when the dust settled, they see him. Rapscallion made it out alive. And he's got his treasure back. It's mine again, he cried. The scoundrels danced about in celebration. Everyone cheered. I think it's time we go home, said Cedric. Yes, Mary replied. And so they crawled out of the rocky mountains of Gravel and made their way through the desert of stone. When they reached home, Mary told Cedric, I will never leave the shade of the hostel again. It's quite lovely there, but who knows? Maybe another adventure will find us, he replied. Perhaps someday, said Mary. But I'm just fine for now. The end.